and I'm walking down the alleyway after I put away the hose. And all of a sudden, it felt like something popped into my throat and like a needle stuck my throat. Rochelle, how did you find carnivore? So it was actually a, a out of desperation. Um, I had been doing a lot of research uh, to uh, find a solution to my stomach problems. So my stomach problems that I, I realized over the last couple of years, they started many years ago. Um, and, uh, but yeah, they got really bad in uh, actually two and a half, about two and a half years ago, April of um, uh, 22. I ended up in the emergency room and everything came to a head that day. I mean, that day, literally. But uh, they, it started way before that. Back in 1987, um, I had uh, decided I was starting school to get my uh, GED and, you know, kind of get things <laughs> grow up a little, right? Um, and I decided to go on a diet. Um, I did have a weight problem. I've always had a a, a weight problem. So, but I decided to go on a diet, quit smoking and quit drinking all at the same time. Well, when I did that, the only thing that held was to quit smoking. What I found out though, is with that diet, I love whole milk. Uh, so I drank it a lot. I drank it re religiously almost. Um, but what I realized when I started eating again, and I introduced milk back into my diet, I noticed that uh, something was happening that didn't happen while I was on this diet. And I was only on it for a couple of weeks. <laughs> I have no willpower at all. Um, but I, before I used to get this sharp, like somebody had stabbed me, sharp pain in my real lower right side. Whenever, like if I was laying down and I'd twist, it would be like somebody stabbed me. And it was, you know, I thought maybe uh, it used to be the, what the, appendix or something, but it was much lower than that. Um, well, I noticed when I went on that, oh, I didn't notice when I went on the diet that it went away. You know, you don't notice when things are good, right? Uh, unless you really pay attention. Well, when I went off the diet, I noticed that pain came back and I'm going, well, that's kind of weird. So I decided to do an experiment and discovered that it was the milk causing it. Uh, so I had to knock out milk. I even tried non-fat milk and it didn't work. Um, so, you know, it, I, over the last two years, I guess, I discovered that I had stomach problems a long time ago. You know, they started way back when, probably before that, I'm sure. Um, and then um, in 2014, uh, I, I was actually going to school again. My son, it, you know, I'm, I've got the same story with most carnivores uh, that, you know, I, I struggled with obesity. Um, I had my half my thyroid removed when I was 15. And ever since then, it, I struggled with it. Um, well, my son in 2014, my son challenged me and it don't don't challenge me. <laughs> you know, uh, he said, Mom, if you try this diet, it was a modified Atkins diet. If you try this diet. Um, I guarantee you lose 20 pounds in two weeks. And I looked at him, I go, no, I won't. He goes, yes, you will try it. I go, okay, I'll do it. And it's just to prove you wrong. Um, well, I proceeded to eat, eat the diet, try the diet. And in two weeks, I lost 10 pounds. I still told him, I told you so, <laughs> but I lost 10 pounds and it was enough to motivate me, right? So I, I, you know, I went really low carb. I mean, as far down as, um, uh, you know, to under 10 carbs. Uh, but what I cut out was bread. And again, I didn't realize uh, uh, some other things that I had a problem with wheat at that time. Um, I was on the diet for several months. I lost almost 60 pounds. And uh, through a chain of events, I ended up falling off of it. But I realized that um, bread, you know, with it, because I learned about the milk, bread from my hips down to the bottom of my feet, I would have pain. I always had trouble walking and it'd be very painful. And I thought, 
well, that's just the weight, you know, and, but it wasn't, it was the wheat. And when I stopped eating wheat, half of all that pain went away, not all of it, not all of it, but more than half went away. So I had to cut off wheat 100%. And I was really happy to do that. No problem. And I just kind of, after that, I just kind of went on my merry way, eating whatever and not really having any, um, uh, you know, I had indigestion. It was, it wasn't a lot. I had, um, uh, heartburn and I just pop a Tums or take a swig of, uh, Pepto or something, you know, like that, just something to coat my stomach. And, uh, in 2019, I can tell you the day, actually, it's one of two days. It was in November. It was the first or the second Monday of 2019. And I was taking care of my horse and, um, I was on sabbatical from work. So I was able to spend the days with my horse and I'm walking down the alleyway after I put away the hose. And all of a sudden it felt like something popped into my throat. And like a needle stuck my throat. And um, so I kind of blew it off thinking, well, you know, all the dust and everything in here, I probably just, you know, soaks up, sucks something up, you know. And uh, I developed a cough out of that. And I kept coughing. And for about two weeks with this cough, I, you know, they say if you have a cough longer than a certain period to call a doctor. So I did. And unfortunately, I don't go to the traditional um, doctors. I uh, use Indian health uh, so that everything's kind of different with them. <clears throat> and so they ended up, um, I got in and it takes forever to get in for appointments, right? Um, I got in, they took uh, chest x-rays because I had this cough, you know, they want to make sure my chest was clear, didn't have a problem there. And so they ended up which was really kind of weird. They ended up prescribing me albuterol, an inhaler, uh, because I had some, you know, with the cough, I had a little bit of, I was getting enough oxygen, but it felt like my breathing was being blocked. I don't know if that makes sense. It's hard to describe the feeling, right? And so I just went along my way. They said, well, talk, you know, talk to your primary doctor, which was at another tribal hospital or clinic. and. So we we're going through some back and forth, you know, and of course with the time frame. And then COVID hit, so things really got slow in in uh, working on my treatment. In the meantime, I'm just popping. I mean, from from that November, that first uh, that Monday in November, um, I was just really cranking down the antacids. And, you know, my Lanta and everything because of the heartburn and everything just, it just, you know, if I wanted to eat, I had to drink it or, eat, you know, pop a pill, something. Uh, my primary doctor referred me to a gastroenterologist, whatever they're called, a gastro doctor. And of course, I couldn't go in and see him. So he couldn't do all the usual pokes and prods. It was all on the phone, all online. And, um, uh, and he uh, said, well, OK, well, I'll get back to get get back with your primary doctor. Tell him what I found out and stuff. And um, and I said, OK. And, you know, a lot of time passes in trying to get with my doctor. Right. Well, in the meantime, this was in early summer of 22. Uh, excuse me. Uh, 2020. And they. um with some of the time frame I'm kind of lost in, but um, I started, uh, you know, just kind of checking in things. What are you treating me for? Because they never told me what they were treating me for. They wanted to try me on a couple different medications. Um, and, you know, the, a lot of time lapse and I, it's just like, it's a blur. I was working full time and, and, uh, and whatnot. And it, it just, it's, it's kind of a blur between 20 and 21 until like April of, uh, 22. But what happened was I just kept, I just kept, uh, you know, pounding down the antacids and everything and, and starting to eliminate stuff out of my diet. Um, and then, um, 
uh, let's see, in 2021, I came across, uh, I was doing some internet research and I came across, you know, I was looking for stuff, how to treat acid reflux and all that. And I came across the book, The Complete Acid Reflux Diet Plan. So I read the book and most of the book is, you know, most of the book is uh, diet plan itself, you know, uh, menus and stuff. So I tried it um, and just writing everything out and, and keeping logs and, and writing in the book and taking notes and some of the food in there and going, do I really want to do this? And I go, well, you know, you got to try it, got to try it. Anything once, twice, if you like it, right? <clears throat> and it just got so monotonous trying to track everything it even got to the point that i had thought about hiring somebody you know to do my cooking and meal preps for me because i just that's why i failed in you know diets I, i'm sorry there's there are setups for failure i've tried many diets in my life and it's you know up and down up and down <laughs> but it was really hard to to stay with it, it just got too hard with it you know trying to plan my meals and everything I think I stuck with it maybe for about a month and um, and I really didn't notice a change, a real big change, um, maybe because I was thinking too much about, um, you know, the work that I had to put into this diet. Right. <laughs> and um, so it it. it it just kind of, you know, after that, it was just like, okay, well, I'm just going to keep on popping the pills and do whatever and find out what, you know, in the meantime, I'm talking to the doctor still and, and they're not coming up with any answers. Well, we don't know. And they're trying to get tests scheduled for different things and, and nothing came across. Of course, you know, with COVID that interfered quite a bit. The time frame that it takes to get appointments at my clinic was a big uh, uh, obstacle. Um, and I had, uh, with, with COVID, I had to end up go, uh, working, uh, remotely, um, and having to show up at work one, one week a month. So I was doing a lot of traveling too. And I just happened to be down. I actually sold my house in, uh, the Portland area in, in November of 2021. 20, and so I was on the road a lot and I was at my son's house, uh, in April of 22. And I remember um, being woken up by these symptoms. And the symptoms that I would get were like something stuck in my throat, constantly clearing my throat. And then it felt like I could breathe, but it felt like there was something there covering it, blocking my breathing. I don't, like I said earlier, I don't, I don't know how to describe it. Um, and then, um, but I, the, all the symptoms woke me up. And of course I, I could sense some anxiety too. And so I sat, I would think I woke up like six o'clock in the morning and it was on a Sunday and it was like all day, the symptoms kept going. I go, I should go to the doctor. I should go to the doctor. No, no, just wait, just relax. they will go away. And by, I think it was about five or six o'clock at night. I finally looked at my son's girlfriend and says, will you take me to the emergency room? Cause these are not going away and I just feel like they're getting worse. And so, uh, you know, we went to the emergency room and, um, of course I'm in the emergency room for hours. Right. <laughs> and they do all the tests. They do blood tests. They do, uh, uh, the ECG or EKG, whatever, whatever it is they do. Um, and uh, do a chest x-ray and stuff like that and they started talking to me about well do you have anything going on do you have anything you know physical going on that you're working with your primary care and i said well you know they they say i have acid reflux and you know they haven't told me that i have bird but it seems like they're trying to treat me for that and so they chalked it up to anxiety and acid reflux so they gave me, um, they said, see your primary care. They gave me a couple of, a couple of pills for anxiety to bring me down. I never took them, but, uh, it was kind of interesting. I go, really? Are you kidding me? But it, as strange as it is that day marked the, the, the day that things really escalated for me after that day, I couldn't eat hardly anything. 
I couldn't eat any spices. I could, uh, I mean, I lost 30 pounds in a month, you know, and it's just like, what is going on? I can't eat anything. And um, so I started because of the acid reflux, you know, uh, book that I had done the year before and the diet, trying that, I just started doing research. Um, I just got on the computer, YouTube videos and just, just, you know, acid reflux, you know, and then I came across Jason Fung, Fung, Fung and, and it came up uh, the intermittent fasting and he was talking about uh, some stuff, uh, plus his book on the obesity code and stuff. Um, and so I got really interested in him and I started watching his videos and, and it kind of, kind of steered me in the direction of other doctors. And lo and behold, there was Dr. Ken Berry's carnivore diet, uh, uh, videos. I started running into those and I guess that was near the end of the, the summer of 22. And, uh, and then through Dr. Kim Berry's videos, I found uh, Sean Baker and uh, Chaffee, Dr. Chaffee. And uh, Sean Baker, I, I got his book, The Carnivore Diet. Yeah, his book, uh, The Carnivore Diet. I, I uh, read it once already. And while I didn't quite get to the end, I stopped reading it. But I just kept watching videos and finding more videos. And of course, I'm a glutton for punishment. <laughs> Uh, it just takes me forever. <laughs> um, so I'm still doing all this research and I go, well, you know, what about the cholesterol and all this other stuff? I mean, my cholesterol, all my, all my numbers are perfect. They always have been. And that's another thing. All my, all my blood uh, tests, you know, everything comes out really good. My problem was, well, being overweight, um, but then now my stomach. And I was down to eating every bland food. You know, I was still eating carbs. I was eating rice, sweet potatoes, stuff like that. Um, I wasn't eating any uh, uh, sugar sweets, nothing like that. Um, they made me sick to my stomach. I could, the spices what really killed me because I love garlic. I love, you know, all the little spices on food and I had to stop cooking. Um, I couldn't eat, I can't eat out <laughs> because I don't know how to, cook what you ask them to. <laughs> um, but uh, I guess it was around December. Um, I started really seriously thinking about doing the carnivore diet, but I couldn't sell myself on it. And um, I just kept watching videos. And then, you know, January came and I'm going, you know, I should really try this. It, it just might you know, I've tried everything else. I'm down to nothing, practically nothing to eat anyway. You know, I've lost it by this time about probably 40 pounds. So at this stage, how was your throat? Same, same way, same way. It, feeling like something was in there, always clearing my throat. And also at the time, I guess it was um, uh, October. That's the date on my prescription for the doctor, my doctor prescribed me famididine. And then they also prescribed me the propranthazole. It's, it's kind of something like omeprazole or something. And I didn't take it at first because <laughs> I, I didn't want to take drugs. I didn't want to be on drugs. And, um, you know, I, I even bought omeprazole over the counter thinking, well, you know, I heard this will work. And, and then of course I, I stopped because I saw the symptoms and what you have to do to get off it and all that good stuff. And it's just like, no, not going there. And then, um, well, January things weren't really changing with my symptoms because there were still food triggering me. And, uh, so I decided to go ahead and start taking the pramp, the, the propran pantoprozole or something it's kind of like a meprazole um and they um and i started taking it and I'm going, i really don't want to do this and uh february comes and and i got laid off from my job so i'm really at home sitting down you know into my own self and really paying attention to myself and then March comes in and I go, you know, I really should try this. And then I started thinking about the cost 
and the cholesterol again and everything else. And, you know, it's funny. I woke up on March 9th of last year, 2023. And I said, just do it. You know, you'd like to do 90 days, but at least start with 30. Just do it. 30 days. You can handle 30 days. And, you know, I was going off of the Kim Berry 2 video of the BB and E challenge, BB, B and E challenge. And so that's, that's what I went with. And I, uh, yeah, it was interesting. I adapted to it quite well, uh, quite easily too, because while I was already low on carbs, because I couldn't eat anything. So early on, I kept thinking I was doing something wrong. You know, I must be eating it wrong or something. You know, and the whole time I didn't give up. Well, of course, I couldn't eat anything else, but I just just kept going. When 30 days passed, I'm going, well, that wasn't so hard. I still like to do 90, but let's commit to, to 60. So I did. And um, I still felt like I was doing something wrong because all the videos I would watch and all the interviews I watched, you know, with uh, Steak and Butter Gal and, and Dr. Kim Berry and, and Dr. Chaffee's uh, 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 videos, you know, it's just like, that didn't happen for me. That didn't happen to me, you know? And it's just like, I must be doing something wrong. I go, but I can't eat anything else, so I'll just keep on going. And um, so I just stuck with it. And when 90 days came, I said, you know, my, my symptoms are going away. And at that same time, when I started eating carnivore is the day that I st started weaning myself from the propranzolol, pr whatever it is, um, the GERD medication, um, because I did not want to take that. And it took me over a month to wean off of that, according to the way they said to wean off of it. So I did it right. Um, and the symptoms were going away and stuff. And then, of course, you know, I want to try to add something little, you know, nothing. I was strictly carnivore, but, you know, just kind of noticing just little things. And I started really paying attention. Um, but all the while, probably all of last year, I, I believed I was doing something wrong because I wasn't going along like other people. You know, I wasn't progressing. Um, I got the clear net, clear head. I, you know, I, I can, there's a lot of things that have improved. One big thing that really changed is all the pain is gone. All of it. All the pain is gone. Now I know when I make a mistake because the pain comes back. <laughs> you know? So, so, you know, like I, I re started with the the butter. I was having butter and I did unsalted butter and I'd put a lot of salt on the meat and stuff. And I, I was still having a little bit of symptoms and I'm going, what's that about? And then, so I, I got into really reading my ingredients more. I have for a long time, but I really got into reading them, them more. And unsalted butter has natural flavorings in it. And that is a chemical. And then I stopped eating unsalted butter. And then then the reactions, which were typically pain in my foot or, or my ankle, it went away. So I can't eat unsalted butter because of natural flavorings. Thus, I can't eat natural flavorings. <laughs> um. Um, then watching all the videos and everything over the year, you know, I, I was thinking, I got to have a crunchy munchy, you know, something to crunch on and whatnot. And so I found pork rinds. Oh, I can have pork rinds. That's considered carnivore. Well, I'd eat pork rinds and then I'd get that feeling in my neck. Like, you know, a lot of, like there was something stuck in my neck and my throat. And I'm going, what's that about? And so I'd stop eating them and then I'd get that, the sensation of crunchy munchy again. And I'd just, okay, I'm going to suffer through it. Like I said, I'm a glut for punishment. Um, and uh, I didn't go through and I make sure that the ingredients, you know, say that exactly what it is. So I know what it is. Um, I figured it was the oil that they cooked it in. If they cooked it in seed oil or something, 
because I didn't know seed oils at all. Nothing like that. No olive oil, nothing. I make my own tallow. I, I make, I was making ghee for a while, but then I realized, well, uh, if I'm eating salted butter, I don't have the problem. That's why I started making the ghee because I found that I had the problem with the, the unsalted butter. And no, I didn't do the grass fed butter. So I just did regular over the camp, regular butter. Um, cause it's, to me, it's just as good, but, but not the unsalted. Oh, and with the, the pork rinds, cause every now and then, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm an addict, a food addict. And every now and then I get a craving for crunchy, mun crunchy munchies and, you know, having some crunch in the mouth. And so I'd keep, you know, punishing myself by eating the pork rinds. Well, um, I found out that it wasn't pork rinds that was bad. It's something about the type of pork rinds. So I was buying Walmart pork rinds and it just says pork rinds and salt. Um, well, I, I saw pork rinds at Dollar Tree. They make Brim's uh, pork rinds. So I sent an email to Brim's and I said, how do you cook your pork rinds? What did you use seed oils? Do you use lard? What do you use? How are they cooked? And they said they cook them in lard, you know? And um, I did this after I started eating them and I didn't have a problem with them. So I sent them an email asking them and it's just like, wow, that's weird. I could eat Brim's pork rinds, but not Walmart. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And um, I never pursued the Walmart uh, pork rinds, but uh, yeah, anyway, um, as time went on, I tried to reinduce some dairy. And this is another thing that I found out about the natural flavors is I used to uh, buy blocks of Tillamook cheddar cheese, the yellow cheddar, and it has natural flavorings in it. And I, I never, I never really paid attention, uh, but I buy it by the block, the two pound block. And I was eating it and I would get the, the symptoms, you know, a lot of phlegm feeling build up, something stuck in my throat. <clears throat> and then I realized that it was, it was the natural flavorings. And I tried white cheddar without, you know, it's just the cheese and whatever enzymes or whatever they put in it or that it has. And I didn't have a problem with it. Um, so um, it was, it's kind of weird that, about the dairy. Now, dairy, I can't eat because it tends to put weight on, you know, I end up, um, if I eat too much of it, especially, <laughs> and I love dairy, but, uh, um, yeah, I was making my own butter. Uh, I was making, I'm, I make my own tallow. I'm not doing the butter so much anymore. Just the tallow. Uh, I make my own bone broth cause I can't find bone broth without natural flavors and all a bunch of other ingredients unless I want to pay buku bucks for it. And I'm, you know, I don't want to pay buku bucks for stuff. In November was the last time it was, it seems like November of 23 until now I've hit a plateau, um, for my weight. Although carnivore wasn't, my weight wasn't the reason I got on carnivore. I got on carnivore because of my stomach and uh, I'm thankful that I found it. I really am because if I had found carnivore and it was just to get in shape and lose weight and stuff. I would have never stuck with it. Never. Um, I know myself too well. Um, but I was forced to it. Um, but yeah, I've been on a plateau uh, since November. And like I said, all of last year, I thought I was doing something wrong. Well, that didn't happen for me. I, did, I, I, I didn't get that, you know, type thing. And then this year, I just really started looking at videos and listening to like the steak and butter gal and and a couple other videos, I can't think of their names because I'm not as, um, um, I don't watch them as much, but they talk about everybody's different. Everybody's different. Don't give up that no matter what, everybody's different. And I, I realize that I have a lot of healing to do. I still do. And I have to be patient. And I have to understand that I'm better today than I ever was that I can ever remember, you know, last August, which is something I wouldn't have done. Um, last August, I started walking 
And I started walking at, you know, 30 minutes a day. And I'm up to almost three miles a day now. And I do it every single day. I started, um, I started uh, taking one day off because I would be my, no, get up and go walk. You feel good. It helps you and everything else. It's good for your health. And it's, it's, uh, you know, it's just good overall. And another thing that I learned is don't watch the scale. If you, if you're looking at this for weight, look at your body composition. And so I do, and that's my measurements today rather than comparing it with somebody else. Right. <clears throat> um, you know, the, the weight loss and the, and, and the composition changes and everything are a bonus for me. Uh, the pri the priority for me right now is so these symptoms will go away. I don't want to be on medication and carnivore mm. has, has done that for me. And I just, sometimes it just brings me to tears when I think about it, but it was just, it's just so empowering. I still, still get into modes where I try to introduce something. Here's an example. Two weeks ago, I drank coffee for five days. That's how I know my stomach's healing because I could do that. By the fifth day, I started getting some heartburn. And so I said, that's it. I, I kept telling myself before that, you're going to run into a problem. You need to stop. Um, and then I started having the heartburn and I stopped the coffee again. I am just starting to recover from that. I'm still having some pain in my um, foot uh, today when I walked, uh, but it's not as bad as it was yesterday. And it was better still from the day before. <clears throat> uh, and it's just like, no. Nah. Um, another thing that I looked into was cabbage juice. You know, they say cabbage juice is good for your biome, your stomach biome and stuff. So I, I tried fermenting. I, I did a redhead, a red cabbage first and um and fermented it and i drank it and i'm thinking okay well it's a plant and am i are these symptoms that i'm having some of the aches and pains or or is it from the cabbage juice or is it from something else um and the problem i have is i introduce too many things at the same time <laughs> so i can't nail it down oh well i need to work on that i really do <clears throat> But um, I just uh, finished up uh, fermenting a couple of cans of a uh, couple jars of green cabbage uh, juice, and I drank it for the last two days. But I haven't introduced anything else, and I know I'm recovering still from the coffee from two weeks ago. But I'm almost feeling like I'm having some symptoms, and I keep thinking, "Am I just not able to eat any plant food at all?" Do I have to, everything plant and anything chemical? Because that's what it's feeling like right now. So um, I really wanted to, at some point, not now, I'm too afraid, um, is to introduce, you know, the vegetables that I love, like uh, squash uh, or uh, I sweet potatoes, probably not too many uh, carbs in there. But um, I'm I'm not. And, you know, the symptoms, it was enough to get me into the emergency room. They're very frightening when they're extreme. I mean, I just like, I'm alone. What do I do? Oh, my gosh. I don't dare drive, you know, type feeling. And I know anxiety is there, too. But it's just like very frightening. And I don't like yeah. it. Don't yeah. Like it. So, like... Apart from when you're testing things like coffee or things like that, the stomach issues are just gone. Pretty much. I still have the, I still get the occasional, you know, in my throat. Like I've probably cleared my throat a couple of times today, um, like now. <laughs> and then it doesn't feel like there's something really stuck there, but I just have to clear it, you know. Um, so, and I had cabbage juice this morning, so. I drink, I drink about five ounces in the morning on an empty stomach. So, but yeah, my right. stomach, uh, except for the coffee two weeks ago, when it, that one day on Sunday, I got a little bit of heartburn 
but I haven't had any heartburn or indigestion since. Right. Um, and so you don't, you didn't want to be on the meds. So, nope. I mean, the, the good news for you is do eating this way. You don't have to be on any meds, right? Nope. None at all. No. Nice. I, I take my thyroid medication, which I have since I was 15, but, uh, yeah, no meds at all. Now, if I get into where I introduce something or like if, uh, you know, I do eat out occasionally, uh, like I was on a trip with my sister. We went on a three week, uh, cross country trip. We had to eat out a couple of times and they don't get it right. You know, I tell them no spices or anything, but maybe they cook it on a grill that has pepper or something. I have a backup, which is thimidine and it helps with any acid. It, it relieves the acid in the stomach. Um, so I did, I use that as a emergency only. So like, an example would be when I with a coffee two weeks ago. Yeah, once I started feeling the heartburn, I went and got a femidity. <laughs> so, but it's it's not often. So day to day, how are you eating now? So I eat uh, primarily ribeyes. You know, I thought when I first started this, the cost and everything, but I think I pay, spend less a month, uh, less each month for my food bill because I'm only buying the meat. I buy some butter uh, and eggs. And I've got a good uh, 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 thing on eggs where I you know, buy them from a local person and they're really cheap. Uh, they just pay for the feed. But that's pretty much what I eat. Like I'll, I'll, I'll eat uh, um, for my afternoon meal, I'll eat a ribeye. Um, I just, uh, oh, and ground beef too but I'll have a ribeye, maybe a hamburger patty and two or three poached eggs with a couple of tablespoons of butter. And then in the morning, if I eat, if I eat two meals a day rather than just one, I'll have a couple of eggs. Maybe I'll fry them up in some uh, bacon fat and have a hamburger patty or whatever meat is left over from the night before, if that's the case. Like I had a little piece of ribeye left over from last night that I just munched on today. I didn't have any eggs, but it was enough to hold me over. So, but yeah, that's, that's it. That's primarily it. And I don't buy the other stuff. So I think my average food bill, you know, I always hear people say, Oh, it's so expensive having to buy all that beef. And no, it's not. You cut out everything else. You're not spending the money on everything else. And, you know, I spend probably between everything, maybe $200 a month max. You wow. Um, and so it was your son that originally recommended you try this modified Atkins diet um, a while ago. How does your son feel about the way you're eating now? Well, he 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 supports it 100 percent. And I, I keep telling him, you know, he sees the results, you know, and I keep telling him uh, you know, that he should try it. Cause he's always talking about, well, and you know, he works out. He's not, he's not big by any means. He's tall, but, uh, you know, he, he's always wanting to improve. And I tell him you should do that. And well, you know, he likes his food too much. <laughs> um, uh, now on the other hand, I have another sister and brother who seem a little concerned about it. And, oh, well, you need vegetables. Oh, you need fiber. And I look at them, I go, no, I don't. <laughs> and they say, well, you know, what about this? And what about that? And, and I go, look at me. Proof is in the pudding. Look at me. And um, also another thing that I did is I started doing research on the cholesterol, you know. And I saw a bunch of videos with, I think, Chaffee. And there was one other one that I that I saw. They were talking about cholesterol and that it's a big lie. And you have to have cholesterol, especially men. I guess it really boosts their testosterone and stuff. But uh, I just like, I'm not going to worry about it. Although, you know, back here in the back of my mind, I'm still thinking cholesterol, cholesterol. You know, that's what the doctors tell us and everything. Uh, my last doctor's appointment, which was in the spring, <clears throat> 
they my cholesterol is elevated of course my numbers my whole life have been really low and regular and all that uh was high and when she got back the results were in were in the office and she goes we might want to think about putting you on a statin and i just looked at her i go <laughs> i go not happening <laughs> no medications for a rochelle no not happening and then she goes, well, let's just keep an eye on it. We'll follow up again and take another test uh, in a couple of months, you know, three months, and just do a follow-up and see. And then so when she gave me the, the readout, I took the readout, and I had also heard about the ratio, triglycerides ratio and all that. And I did the math on it, and my ratio was like 0.8, you know, between the cholesterol and the, the, the triglycerides. And I said, well, that's really good. <laughs> And um, I went down uh, three months after that, uh, actually, you know, about two months ago, a uh, month and a half ago, and um, they took some more blood and she says, well, everything looks good. And she goes, well, your cholesterol is still the same. It's the same as it was before. She didn't mention anything about statins. <laughs> I go, she better not because I just tell her dead flat. No, not happening. <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah. Medications, no. No, it's it. It's scary when you think really the mm -hmm. the point where a doctor is going to start recommending statins is really just a cutoff point. It's like, well, you didn't pass the test today, so you need to take statins, and it, it's based on nothing else. You know, it's not like you're presenting with a symptom or something. It's just like, oh, it's one hundred and twenty you need to go on a statin and it's like it's just ridiculous yeah well she she had asked with the first test she had asked she goes uh what are you doing differently because you know like i said previously every year my numbers are really low and i said well with my stomach issues and she knows about it because she was part of all the treatment plan and stuff um i said i can't eat anything but meat there's nothing i can eat but meat so no, I'm not going to eat meat and go on a statin and still be sick. No. <clears throat> but I, I told her, no way. So, I mean, that is the alternative, right? You keep the right. doctor happy by taking a statin, but then you go back to having stomach issues and <laughs> exactly. it's just not an option, right? No, no, it's not. Or even worse, you know, I hear, I read up on statin, uh, you know, the the side effects of statins and they're not good. They're really not good. And I've heard a lot of stories. Watch, you know, because I did the cholesterol thing, you know, the the, the research on the, on YouTube and that. Um, and I'd hear stories about the way people responded to statins. And it's just like, that's worse than what I was when I was eating all the food. No, I don't think so. I can't get out of my head, though, you know, what we've been fed my whole life about cholesterol is bad, you know, and it's not, it's, it's not. Yeah. I mean, it's the same as diet, you know, it's, it's hard to get that out of your head, you know, like you have to eat your vegetables and all this kind of thing, you know, until you realize how well your body is responding to not eating them. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I was, real you know, of anyone, your body, you know, doctor, friends, family, anyone, your body's not going to lie to you. Nope. And that's what I keep telling my sister and my brother. I remember my brother, he's younger than I, 10 months younger than I am. And, uh, he, you know, I, he goes, how's the diet going? I go, and it's going great. You know, I'm still eating the same old stuff. He goes, I thought you were going to introduce vegetables. I go, well, I would like to at some point, but not, not right now. He goes, oh, like he's disappointed, like he's concerned about my health. Um, no, proof is in the pudding. Just, you know, I'm, I'm walking and I never, never walked on my own before. And I never had the energy. It was just like, and it hurts so much just to walk, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. So what does the future hold for Rochelle? Uh, uh, up. Uh been higher to I'm um, just whatever the limits are you know I'm I'm I probably shouldn't say this I'm 65 I just turned 65 
and my sister she's 71 or 72 and she keeps harping on me about age and i said you watch when i'm your age i'm going to be stronger i'm going to be more agile i'm going to be more fit and in shape and that's that's what that's my projection of my future is to just get better just get better yeah that's very nice um so rochelle if you were giving someone advice like let's say your sister said okay well i, I want to give this a try um what advice would you give her to get started uh to get started is uh the advice would be you know don't um don't what's the word i'm looking for so stay within your reality. So like I said, I wanted to do 90 days in the beginning, but I said, I can do 30. So set, set realistic goals, right? Okay, I guess that would be it. Set realistic goals. And then the other thing is listen, do research and listen to what other carnivores are, uh, have said about their beginnings and be ready for them like the is it is it called the flu the 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 oh, keto flu? flu keto flu that's what it says uh where you you know have the flush of all your carbs but maybe you won't everybody's different so stick with it don't just because you're not having the same experience as somebody else doesn't mean it's not working for you did i say that right does that make sense um but yeah, to stick with it. And that was the biggest thing for me. You know, it took me a long time before I realized I got a lot of healing to do. So I'm not going to heal like other people. So I got to quit comparing myself. You know, it's like comparing apples and oranges. You know, I'm, I'm doing it. I, I'm doing it. It's happening different for me because I'm healing different, you know. But uh, this year has really, the second year into it has really shown me some things you know that i really have to just keep on going you know you can't eat anything else so there's only one way but up and uh just listen to other stories and maybe look for different things that might be similar but don't ever think for a minute that it's going to be similar to somebody else you know nice. Does that make yeah so Rochelle, do you, do you have any social media or any way of getting in contact if people want to reach out? Um, actually, I have a couple YouTube. I have a YouTube channel that I was going to start. I haven't. I've got it set up, but I haven't started it. Um, and it was just because I. It's called Tripping with Gamma, and it's you know I built out my truck and I just love to travel. So me and my dog, we get in my truck and we go camping and traveling and do stuff. And I've got a bunch of videos made. I just haven't gone through the process of uploading yet. So I don't know if it's accessible or not. So I haven't really got into it. So the answer would probably be not so much not right now. <laughs> Other than my email. So. No worries. Well, um, you know, I can, I can always link to your YouTube below. And um, once you start putting videos on there, people can, uh, people can see them. Okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, thank you so much for coming on today, Rochelle, and sharing your story. I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed it. I appreciate it a lot.